previously on Abandoned and Forgotten Places. Everybody. Welcome back. All right, well, before we get started today, I wanted to put out a big thank you to Jeff Williams and his wife. A while back, they put together a nice little segment in their video 
Um, they were they told everybody that I was going through a health issue and to send some love my direction Hey, Jeff, I really do appreciate that you guys are awesome and your channel is great too, Jeff I mean guys if if you don't know who Jeff Williams is you need to head on over to his channel and check it out It's ask Jeff Williams. That's his YouTube channel and if you want to learn more about his uh, his stuff go to askjeffwilliams.com it's right here. Just click on the link down in the description area. Jeff is awesome when it comes to geology. And another thing that I really like about his channel is when I'm exploring these abandoned mines, there's a lot of times that um, I find things that I don't get too in depth into, like mine construction, shaft construction, things of that nature. And that's where Jeff steps in and shows you guys how a lot of these places were constructed because he himself has his own gold mine. And if you guys want to learn how to actually find gold out in the hills, Ask Jeff Williams is the YouTube channel for you. Thanks again, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Oh, and by the way, Jeff, I really want to get in contact with you. I think I might be down in your neck of the woods. So please send me an email to abandoned and forgotten places at hotmail.com. That's abandoned and forgotten places at hotmail.com. I want to get in touch with you. Like I said, I might be in your neck of the woods here pretty soon. All right, guys. I've got a 400 foot shaft for you today with a real skinny little manway and uh, that's why I'm not dressed up like Buzz Lightyear. Rather than doing that, I've got my extra batteries in my pockets, I got some water here, got my uh, air monitors on my chest, because this one here is going to be really skinny trying to get down this manway, but it's 400 feet deep. You guys saw this on one of my DSE videos. Down in the bottom we got some cool stuff like a sawhorse. Maybe some drill steel. I don't know. We saw some neat things down in there. So hopefully the manway will be intact all the way to the bottom. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let me show you what we got going on here. So here's the shaft. And uh, if you guys can remember, this is the one that's collared all the way to the bottom. Okay. I can't imagine how many board feet of lumber they used in this. So what we did is, uh, let me get my lights turned on here. There we go. So what we did is uh, we got an extension ladder because it's missing the ladder in the first 20 feet to keep people out of here. And uh, that's what we're gonna head down right now. So. I'm just gonna set that right there for a moment. I'm gonna see if I can't get my foot stuck or my butt stuck on a nail. Can't, can't use that. Nope. That one's a, that one's a mover. That's a mover, huh? Oh, boy. oh, this is a stinky mine. I can already smell it. All right, let's make sure that landing can take my weight. Yep, it can. You'll be okay for sure, Ray. <laughs> Did you want to use the bucket and a rope to get the camera down? No, I'm going to do it like I always do it. First of all, I see all that white powder coming off my gloves. Switch my hands here. Oopsie. Wait, I had a camera rig malfunction. Give me a second, guys. There. Switch my weight here. There we go. So, what we're doing today is uh, something a little different. I've never taken the 360 cam into a manway before, so this ought to be pretty darn cool. Okay, all right, I got to the first landing, and let's take a look at number two here. Now, I figure we got 20 sets of ladders we got to skinny down, and here is set number two. Yeah, this landing is in really good shape, and just as I suspected, the ladders are too. All right, give me a second here, set that down. Until I get my footing. <clears throat> I 
let's see here. Oh. Hey, no, that's not what I want you to do. Give me one second, guys. Another camera difficulty here. There we go. Okay. Yep, I'm really happy I didn't bring the backpack. <laughs> Boy, these are skinny. Gee whiz. See, so the nice thing about uh, going down a shaft <clears throat> like this with landings is if one of these ladders does do something silly, you're only going to fall about 15 to 20 feet, which is still ain't going to feel very good, but it's better than falling 400, right? All right, Randy, you can start coming on down. Uh, the ladders are looking in really good shape. Nice. And, and, and if it does fall, it's only 15 to 20 feet. Yeah, it's only 15 to 20. At Randy, I'm telling you, man, it's as easy as falling down a ladder. What a relief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except uh, <laughs> I'm going to... There. There we go. Okay. The landings are in really good shape, too, Randy. Set that down a minute. Yeah, on each and every one of these. What I'm gonna have to do is set the camera down for a second until I get my big fat butt through the hole. There we go. All right, what do we have on this next one? So, um, take a look real quick, guys, here at the construction. You see how they notched each one of these out? See that notch in the board right there? And now look at the thickness of these boards. Two inches. They are two by eight. And in some cases, two by ten. Really, I mean, this has got to be the most stout mine shaft that I have ever seen. Now watch, the second I say that... Alright, that's just my... That was my breath. Alright, this next one... That ladder is a little bit longer. Yeah. Oh, there's a dead mouse. I can't believe how skinny they make these. Those guys back in the day, they were just little fellers. So uh, you might be asking, what's the purpose of these manways like this and why did they make them so small? Well, it's entirely made for safety. For the miners um, you know if something happened with the hoist there is always another means of getting out of the mine I mean what if worst case scenario you had a fire or something like that at least you had a sec some kind of a secondary escape route you know okay down here on the floor, right there, is a dead pack rat. That's a pack rat. Now, give me a second, guys. I'm going to set my camera for it down for a moment. I can tell right now I've got a... Yeah. i got to move my monitors lower because they're, they're capturing my breath. The CO2 coming out of my breath. So I'm going to 
put them at about belly button height. Let's see how that works. Okay. All right, here we are to the next landing. How's it coming, Randy? You weren't kidding. It is tight. Yep. And I told I, I you. Did use, I did bring my backpack. And I'm struggling. Okay. Uh-oh. Something's going on here. Boy, boy. Yeah, this is a tight one. Nicely constructed, though. The fellers must have got themselves a heck of a deal on lumber. Have you ever seen a, a shaft constructed this way, Randy? I don't know. I mean, look at, look at how thick the timbers are. Yeah, they are really solid. They, they are, are solid as I've, as I've ever what, seen. What is that, uh, two and a half, three inches thick? Yeah. Yeah, like two by, two by eights, I'm guessing. We got, there's someone, there's a letter M. Now as I'm going down these, here's another thing. Look at the construction underneath the landings. See how they block and brace that there? Yeah. But I'm looking at the nails. The nails look galvanized. I think we're in a very much more modern mine here. Like I said earlier, 40. 40s or 50s okay right here we're down 75 feet oh, this is tight <sighs> only i think when this mine closed down the workers went to work at willy wonka's chocolate factory okay randy where i'm at we're at 300 we're at, we're at uh, 75 feet down only 325 more to go right there okay I told Randy, I said, yeah, this is going to be a, an easy day. Okay, set that there. Now, I probably won't be taking you all the way down the manway with me. We'd end up with an hour-long video of nothing but ladders. <laughs> yeah, and we've got compression. See? Now this happens over time. Little by little by little, the earth pushes in. I'll be real happy to get past this. Hey, Randy? Yeah. Okay, so about two ladders down from you, we've got a bunch of compression. So, uh, just be careful through this section. Okay. All right. Got past the compression area. I'm happy to see that the mine is getting in, looking to be in better shape. And the reason, oh yeah, I see why. Now look here, guys. So on the other side of them boards, you can see solid rock. So right here okay here let me show you this on the drone footage now you can see that the shaft goes down into a big pile of waste rock well somewhere that waste rock had to meet up with solid rock of the hill where i'm standing right now is where that solid rock meets the waste rock so you had all that pressure from the waste rock pushing down and in on these on this lagging and that's why there was a compression occurring right through that section. Yep. I see a little more compression right there, too. It'll be interesting to see if we're past the waste rock down here. Two hours later. So we got a rip your can. We have uh, sample bags. And we got a ladder. Oh, there's the bottom. Okay. There's that vertical ladder that we saw 
on the DSE video. All right, let's see if I can wiggle over there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> barely get through this. All right. Little by little here. All right. Now, I just need to have my darn So isn't it odd that there are no drifts anywhere down to here? Yeah. So they were after something deep and that's it, huh? I wonder okay. if they ever found it. We're at the bottom. Yay. Come on down, Randy. All right. <sighs> Good grief. Time to take a break, take a drink of water. <sighs> Did you look at these newspapers? Are they? They're just, those are sample bags. Oh, you sure? Yeah. In modern looking root beer, generic. Springfeld. The field, Springfield root beer. Never heard of that. Yeah, that's a new one. It's like a grocery store generic brand. That one's kind of skinny, isn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how am I going to get my backpack through there. <laughs> totally turned sideways. <laughs> how did you get through this? Good God. I know. Oh, that's a tight one. My gosh. Are you filming this? Yes, I am. <laughs> we got to see just how tight that is. And it's yeah, tight. My, my backpack had to go up to my head to get through there. Good job, Randy. All right. Wow, here we are. Here we are. Okay, guys, we're going to take a break. And, uh,. Rub some of the, get some of the sweat out of my eyes and uh, recompose ourselves, get a drink of water, Piece of and nice we will be right back. Watch out for that stick of dynamite, Randy. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, everybody, that was nice. We had a chance to take a break. Randy jumped down into the sump, and uh, there was indeed something pretty stinky down in there, wasn't there, Randy? Yeah, and uh, the water bottles that you threw down for us to drink all exploded. <laughs> all exploded. And reactivated the dead things that were in the hole. Well, I'm glad that you uh, did. I guess I I am. Oh, be quiet now. I, I'm happy that uh, you did bring your backpack so I can haul them, them, them plastic bottles back out of here. So we don't trash the place up. But anyways, we're at the 400 foot level and we do have some artifacts down on here in here. I can see a dynamite box off to the left. Okay, uh, that's one of the newer models. Um, all kinds of stuff laying around down here. There is some newspaper I saw right over here, Randy. Can you see if there's a date on, a date on any of that newspaper? Now, more than likely. Rules for storing, keeping, moving, thawing, charging, and handling dynamite. Oh, okay, yeah. That's, We've seen that before. That's all going to be for that. All right. Paint can. Still got the tin shiny on there. Yep. We've got Bud Light beer cans from probably the 80s or 90s. Um, yeah, the, the water bottles you are seeing, those are ours. There's yeah. a mouse nest under that board. Got wet from the water. Yep. Now, guys, here is 
So if you go back, if you can remember the DSE video, that's where it said 400 feet on the wall. That shelf right there had nothing but a bunch of nails and wire on it. Turning back around this direction just real quick, the thing that we saw in the video turned out to be the lid on a cooler, styrofoam lid on a cooler. The mine continues up that direction, but we're not gonna go that way first. Turning back around, we're gonna go this way. Randy, do you find any other treasures for us up in here? I wouldn't call it a treasure, more like a... Oh, here's a bird. Station. There's a dead... Some kind of a... I don't know about those stripes and the, sh the, uh, the head shape is kind of strange. Is that, I don't it's think, I don't think that's an owl. an owl. I don't think that that's an owl. Here is a really old bottle down on that side over there. Yeah, look at that. Take a look at the bottom, it's Randy. Not too old. Sometimes, sometimes there'll be a date in yeah. the bottom. Oh, quit it. I may just have to hang those. Mold seam goes to the top. I'm gonna move those monitors. Oh, there's a brown recluse. Where? Right there. Hold on. A lot of spiders. Look at <laughs> right there. See? There's a recluse right there. So he had the little fiddle on his abdomen, brown fiddle. Well, I can't see from this distance. Not with my eyesight. I don't have my glasses. All right, All right. turning around. We've got an old package of chocolate chip cookies, Napa filter, and a big pile of shims. Anything? I like this old burlap. It's so coarse and rough looking. Let's make some clothes out of that. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, let me pop you guys over to drone footage right now. So the drift that we're traveling in goes this direction and it's just as I thought it would. It's going to follow the trending dike moving from I think it's north to south. I think it, I'm just gonna kind of going off of memory here. Yeah, I believe north to south. And what do we have? That's it? This is it. <laughs> Short and sweet. Nailed it. You nailed it, huh? All right, well, turning back around. Like I said, given the size of the waste rock pile outside, um, they had high hopes for this mine, put a lot of money into the shaft, but maybe when they finally got down here, they ran out of dough. All right, let me show you guys this since we're right here. Here's the sump. Get a good look at it there. That rock and those boards that you see down there, Randy just built that momentarily. He was down there picking through the sump looking for bodies and all he could find was dead pack rats. So there's nothing down there and it does not go left or right over there. So what you got there? Paintbrush, paint can. They are like a Paris a, green color. Uh -huh. Anti-corrosion. Down here on the floor, there's a bag of gypsum. Wonder what they were using that for. Hmm. For a moment there, I thought I thought it was uh, um, uh, 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 ammonium nitrate, but no, it's not. Yeah, I saw that too. Gypsum. I don't know what yeah. that would have been used for. Okay, look at the uh, level of compression on this board, guys. Right over here by Randy. This one's definitely getting the squeeze big time. And uh, this one, it, it's starting to come down. Yeah, let's get out from under that as quick as possible. Okay. Are you going first? Yep, I'll go first. Try to get over here. Let's see what we have. Pew, just like that. It got stinky. Oh, this is really crumbly. 
There we go. Okay, anything to the left. They were thinking about going off that direction and then they stopped. All right. There's some survey tape down on the floor. And we have ourselves a bat. Well, hey, Mr. Bat, how you doing? Oh, <laughs> come here, go get Randy. No, go get Randy, he's right up behind me. All right, now look at, look at the gypsum coming out of here, right where the bat was, right there. See how shiny that is, all gypsum? Let's go up here and say hi to Mr. Bat one more time. What are you doing, Mr. Bat? Now you just stay right up here in the face. That'll keep you from landing on Randy's nose. Yeah. Okay. Turn it back around. Randy ain't nothing up in here but a bat. I can't believe they dug this shaft and, and this is it. This is it. Can you believe that? Wow. I know. Well. What an expense. Let's uh, let's show them some geology there. Oh yeah, there's that piece of gypsum I saw. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is a secondary formation after the exposure to the air, but the uh, crystals are fibrous. Yeah, yeah. Could be epsomite. Uh, it looks more like. Well, it is kind of. Yeah, you're right. It's it's more elongated. Both epsomite and gypsum are sulfate minerals, so that would make sense. It's oxidation of the sulfides. Uh-huh. There's some some of this copper crust might be that uh uh was it chal chalcanthite? Chalcanthite. Chalcanthite. If it was the, blue uh, or copper, copper yeah. sulfate. If it was blue it would be chalcanthite. Head back up a couple feet. Look look right above your head there. Look at that layer. Now see yeah, see that stuff? Just just kind of pull down on a chunk. I, I mean, I, I'm well, not a big one. Off to the side there. Show everybody how crumbly that is. Yeah, okay. Look at that. See how easy that breaks off? Now that's what I found in the uh, in the haunted mine. There was layers and layers of that that was coming down. Look at that. You know what? You ought to... You ought to just take a, a specimen of that and um, put it up on your eBay site, Randy. There might be oh, somebody out there that wants to wants to just have one. It is cool looking at growth of crystals. That is a nice one. I like that. Randy, do you have uh, an e do you have an eBay site? Well, I do. You do. Uh, Grab that one, and uh, I'll. Hey, everybody! I will put Randy's. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Ad e uh, eBay address. I'll put that down in the description area. So if you want to bid on that on that rock, right there, the one, which the one in his right hand, that that looks to be the coolest because it has the longer crystal. They're both really nice. Yeah, let's. What do you think, Randy? Let's do I both. I didn't bring anything to bring back samples. I don't okay. have anything to wrap them with. We have to find some burlap or something. Yeah, we'll use a piece of that burlap. Uh, Somebody might just want a sample of that for their collection. And that way we didn't come all the way down here for nothing, right, Randy? Wow. Yeah, that is one heck of a shaft. Isn't that though? Isn't to, that crazy? To come this deep for nothing. For this this little thing. There's probably a million dollars in lumber in there. <laughs> well, you know that's how it goes sometimes. Let's get out from under this board. I don't want to loiter around here. That's just ultimately dangerous. Well, guys, we're going to take a break a second one more time. And I'm going to go through all of this to try to find a date. We have not found anything with a confirmed date on it. I really would like to know what the construction of this mine was. So I'm just going to set the camera right here. There we go. And we're going to look around for a bit.
that was a lot of fun. We took about uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes to thoroughly go through this entire area. And let me show you what we found. All right, first thing down here on the floor, Randy, show, hold that bag up and so that everybody can see what it says. It's Cal, Cal, does that say sealant? Cal Cementing sealant? service. Cementing, it says super strength gypsum. And now I know we have a lot of um, retired miners in the crowd. What did they use this for? Was that used to pack the hole after they'd put the dynamite in prior to a blast? Okay, next. Then we got, then I found this kerosene tin hiding behind that board and when I look down inside look at what we found right down in there reach it reach in and grab it Randy don't worry about those don't worry about them brown recluses they don't and eat that sharp jagged edge of they don't tin they don't eat much we found a string and string and a plumb bob a plumb bob Look at that. Look at, yep. There's a plumb bob. And all that old hardware in there. Yep. And the bottom, it was filled with uh, those old square spikes for the rails. But that's pretty darn cool. Yeah. An old plumb bob. Then, working our way up this direction, we found some more stuff. This is, this is the super cool. Randy found it, so I have to give him the booby prize. Read what it says, Randy. I'm not sure exactly, but it looks like mine closed October 29th, 1909. Unless that's an eight. Can you zoom in on that? Could that be an eight? Let me see. No, that's a zero. It looks like a zero to me. Yep, that's a zero. Crew, looks like CJ Flock, Pete Johnson. I'm not sure about this. Amel, A-M-E-L maybe? Uh, Stotswad, maybe it's some German name. Leonard something, Peturin, mm -hmm. another guy named Flock, maybe a Flock. brother. I never would have guessed in a million years. I'm going to try turning these two lights off. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer here without getting a bunch of shadows in it. And maybe you can see it right there. Yeah, you, yeah turn yours off. Mm -hmm. Never in a million years would I have guessed this mine would have closed in 1909. No, I thought it was a lot newer than that because of all of the nails we were seeing were in such good shape and they were still shiny. Okay, now let's head off this direction and show them all the other fun stuff we found. Okay, clamber over all this debris. Okay, I found uh, the handle of what could have came off of a shovel or a hammer right there looks handmade yep it could be a, it could be a tamping stick and then another cool find randy found it we Look got some uh some old wax paper probably dynamite wrapping paper that's got advertisements on it from goldfield nevada i believe wood sullivan company the stone front hardware plumbing and tinning uh, builders hardware tin and MLR. and the address was 238 Main Street Goldfield Nevada so we'll try to look that place up and see what it looked like back in the day yeah I'll see if I can't find a picture for you guys of 238 Main Street Goldfield Nevada and if what that business looked like back in 1909 Maurice Joseph Sullivan born December 7, 1884, and passed away August 9, 1953. Sullivan moved to Goldfield, Nevada in 1906, where he worked as a sales representative and manager for a company that provided hardware and other supplies for gold miners and mining companies. He eventually became the principal owner of the Wood Sullivan Hardware Company and was an investor in several mining ventures. While living in Goldfield, he served on the town board as president of the local chamber of commerce and as president of the local volunteer fire department. 
then down here on the floor, we found a cardboard box with the packing list still enclosed. And what do we got there, Eddie? Nothing too old. Somebody probably out here prospecting later on, June 11th, 1980. 1980, and it says button. It's either button bats or button bags. Yeah, it looks like a, either an A or part of an O, T, S is what it looks like to and me. And what we're guessing is that's the case that these sample bags came in. Hold up one of those sample bags, Randy, real quick. Right there. That's a yeah, sample bag. Made out of a Tyvek type material. Yeah. Plastic fiber. Very strong. That's that's probably what that was. Um, was there anything else? I think that was it, Randy. Yeah. I think that's all we found uh, other than the uh, paintbrushes over here. There was... Yeah, cool old natural fiber yeah. rope. Might be hemp. Probably hemp. Mm-hmm. Could be from the early days. Nope. That is it. That's it. Okay, well, we're going to start working our way back up 400 feet of ladders again. And uh, just to give you one last look of what that looks like, from this perspective, take a look right up there. Oh, I'll try to hold the camera as still as possible. Look at that little button of light up there. Oh my gosh. Let's just hope I don't have a heart attack on the way back up, Randy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. Are you ready for this? Are you yep, ready for this ready. climb? Boy, oh boy. All right. Let's get after it. Okay, guys. Unless something cool happens or we, I see something neat or, or uh, Randy gets one of his feet caught on a nail, I'll see you back topside. <laughs> Six hours later. Groundhog Day. Well, guys, thanks for coming along on this fantastic adventure, and I'll see you next weekend. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.